I'm Trevor from Smashworks. Just watched everybody finish a workout here at Diablo Alamo. Say hi, Erica. She just finished her workout. It was a crushing one, long one, 26 minutes. Ripped it out. We got a couple of people finishing up on the rower. And he's done. Look at that, he's done. Today we're gonna to talk about plantar fasciitis. We're gonna talk about mobilizing the tibialis anterior. I'm gonna tuck myself off into the corner here so I don't disrupt the gym workout. It's about 6.30 in the morning. Um, these guys really pushed hard. You should have seen this workout. It was pretty gnarly. Um, so we're going to talk about plantar fasciitis, some uh, tibialis anterior mobility, some calf mobility. What happens is a lot of times is the gastroc, the, that whole calf complex, the soleus, the plantaris, they start to gum up. Now, watching these guys go through that workout, I'm watching them rip out on that rower. They're doing um, snatches. They're doing toes to bar. So the toes to bar involves a lot of hip flexor. But when we're talking about snatches or, or, or just ripping on that rower, What's going on is you're, you're engaging all these muscles at a really rapid rate and if there's any kind of a sticking point, any kind of a little uh, sticky bit in the muscle, that's going to bind up your mobility, your motion through that full range of motion if that makes sense and you're going to have hitches in your giddy up if you want to call it that way. So the muscle will move really smooth and then stick and then really smooth past it. The problem is, is the way the body resolves inflammation because that area gets inflamed is by laying down scar tissue and then the way the body resolves scar tissue is by becoming inflamed. So you see the reciprocal cycle here is it's going in a circle. Inflammation causes scar tissue, scar tissue causes inflammation, and it goes back and forth. So I'm going to show you, and that's a lot of times that the beginning stages of, uh, of plantar fasciitis right at the bottom of the foot. What happens is the fascia on the bottom of the foot, the foot looks like, like a, a, an arch, of course, like a spring, basically. And it's got to move and, and adapt to the terrain 10, 20, 30,000 times a day as we're taking steps or we're doing workouts. And what happens is that fascia starts to get really, really, really tight and it starts to pull on the calcaneus. The calcaneus is the, the heel bone, basically. And right where that, that fascia joins the calcaneus, right at the bottom of the heel, so I'll show you. So right in here, as a matter of fact, here, we'll take off the shoe and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So take off the, the, the shoe and the sock, right here, if you look, this is a lot of times where you're gonna get that plantar fasciitis, you're gonna feel that heel pain, but what happens is this fascia right in here gets really, really, really tight, and that's the beginning stages of plantar fasciitis, and what happens is when that starts to get really bad, you start to get what's called a heel spur. You get a bone spur right in here. Now that bone spur is gonna cause a lot of problems. Uh, and it requires surgery. You can't get a bone spur to go away, but you can keep plantar fasciitis from getting worse, or you can uh, you can actually prevent it from happening. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to I'm going to go right into the plantar portion of the foot. Now I'm going to grab a box, and we'll put this down. I'm still right here. But the reason you want a box is because you want to be able to support yourself. You don't, I don't want you standing on this ball. So you're gonna take a lacrosse ball as always, okay? You're gonna take, toss my shoes over there. You're gonna take the lacrosse ball, and if you watch, so you see where I am right there? I'm right on that spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grind around on that spot. And what I, really, what I really want you to do is you're going to splay out those toes so that tightens up that fascia on the bottom of the foot. And it's going to put even more pressure on it. It's going to hurt a lot more, but it's going to really, really get that mobility. What I want you to do is splay out the toes and then relax the toes. Splay them out and relax the toes at the same time grinding away on that fascia. So what I'll do is I'm going to put the camera right here and you can see exactly what I'm doing. So what I do is I get on that fascia and I start smashing around on there. The phone falls down. Strike three, let's see what happens. All right, so I start smashing around on there and grinding away, but there's a trick to this. Take your foot, put it on top, and really, really, really smash around on that heel. Really get in there, really, like, that's gnarly. Get on the bottom, grind away really, really, really hard. The weight of your other foot is gonna put more pressure on those tendons, it's gonna put more pressure on that fascia. That's why I'm sitting on this box. So I can put that weight on there and I don't have to worry about falling over. I don't want you doing this stuff when you're standing. You're gonna do that for about two minutes. Now the next thing I want you to do is, God, seriously, I mean this is just funky. This is the best environment ever. Cause I mean we get this kind of stuff 
it doesn't get any better than an environment like this. This is my lab. Jeez, and people walk around and call me doctor. How cool is that? So, let's start with this now. So we have tibialis anterior, right? Front of the shin. So right in here is the tibia. This is the tibialis anterior. It gets really short and tight. It gets really irritated and it tends to blow up a lot of times when we're running because it decelerates the foot. So to make it really quick, we're just gonna smash this out. Doesn't feel good at all. However, it's really gonna help a lot with that, um, with, with the uh, movement of the ankle, movement of the foot, and it's gonna keep that, uh, the shin splints from coming in too. So now we got shin splints. Let me stop covering the camera. See, this is why I'm not a cameraman. This is why we're gonna, it's gonna keep the shin splints from coming in. It's gonna keep that plantar fasciitis because it's gonna keep that foot from moving, or it's gonna keep that foot moving properly. What happens is you have an agonist and an antagonist. So the tibialis anterior, lifts the foot, it's called dorsiflexion, and the gastroc, the soleus plantaris, all that plantar flex the foot. So they're gonna have an argument. The problem is the calf, that whole muscle group, uh, the, the triad, you wanna call it, is a lot stronger than the tibialis anterior. So it's gonna cause that foot to do this. The plantar fascia is gonna do this. You're gonna start getting that heel spur. So we wanna mobilize that entire complex, not just the bottom of the foot, if that makes any sense, all right? So we're gonna take this. I'm gonna do this again. We're gonna try this. One more time. All right, so now you got me here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the shin and we're just gonna get it on that PVC pipe. Make sure you're not on the tibia itself, but you're on that meaty portion of the shin. And then you're just gonna go all the way back and forth. I want you to go all the way down to where you stop feeling that muscle. You'll, still, you'll know where that tendon starts, but I want you to go all the way up and go all the way around that. You're gonna smash back and forth. You're gonna roll back and forth on this thing. Now this, really hard so I don't want you putting your entire weight on it unless you can if you can knock yourself out you're gonna do that every sticky little painful bit you're gonna camp out on for two minutes so technically rolling that entire shin that entire tibialis anterior could easily take you know what six to six to eight minutes because you're doing the entire length all down here if that you know do you understand what I'm saying you're gonna go all the way down through here so that's what you're gonna do on both sides as well and then the last thing you're gonna do is we're gonna run across. We're gonna run across here. And they're still working out, so we're gonna run across all the way. We're gonna grab us a kettlebell, grab a 35. This is Ted. Ted's gonna say, hey. You betcha. All right. Ted just finished her workout. Gnarly, gnarly workout. We're gonna come all the way across over here. We're gonna do the same thing, so now we're gonna mobilize that calf. So what we do is we take the kettlebell, all right? Doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's 35, 53 at least, so it's got some weight so it doesn't move around. And I'm gonna put the phone down one more time. And now you can see where I am. You're gonna get that foot on here. And you're just gonna start at the bottom and you're gonna do circles just like this. Contract, relax, all the way around. You're gonna go all the way up the calf. All the way, get on the inside. You're gonna get on the outside. And then, to make it even more difficult, put that foot over top and do the same thing. So, those are the three mobilities we're gonna do to get that ankle and that foot moving the way it's supposed to. So we've got the tibialis anterior, smash, with the PVC pipe. We've got the lacrosse ball on the bottom of the foot all through the plantar area. And we've got our kettlebell to smash the calf with the foot over top, all right? Do all those, mobilize that entire lower leg from the knee down, get that done every day. No plantar fasciitis, no uh, shin splints. All right, I'm Trev, Tuesday morning. Have a great day, I'll see you soon.